So the 600i is basically uh, there to compete as a rival to the RSI Constellation and uh, it's essentially the what Origin brings to the table in response to that. You're going to be using it for much the same things that you do currently use a Constellation for, uh, whether that be combat, whether that be exploration, whether that just be travelling along the, uh, around the verse. It's acting as a kind of style guide template for the larger ships from the Origin line moving forward, so for example the 890 Jump. It's very much kind of pitched around the same area that most players would expect from say like a RSI Constellation, but it's basically an Origin branded ship, so you're kind of expecting a much more luxurious one. And because of the kind of advancements in the systems we've got now, we've also made it a modular ship as well. So within the centre of the ship, there is a core which can be swapped out for other modules. There are two versions of the 600i. There's the Touring and the Exploration. The Touring is a mobile hotel suite. Uh, it's for sending di dignitaries, diplomats, you know, comfortable living, that sort of thing. So even when you do have the luxury module, uh, you do have enough defences on the ship, you've got decent enough shields, you've got missile loadouts, you, you basically have a fully functional ship, but it's much more catered towards the kind of person who wants to show off, you know, exactly what they are kind of flying around. And the exploration module, uh, that's for planetary scanning, uh, long distance exploration, that sort of thing. That one, again, sits bang in the core of the ship, and within that you're going to have an extra two scanning stations, a drop lift and also uh, a buggy to be housed in there as well. So you're going to be using this one much more planet side landing it, taking your buggy out and kind of doing a bit of exploring on the surfaces. So the ship itself is going to be very sort of minimal, sleek, uh, quite stylish, trying to avoid any kind of noise or clutter. It needs to be as smooth and uh, noiseless as possible and we're trying to reflect that throughout the interior and the exterior as well. So it's going to be a, quite a departure from the other ships in the game. It's going to really stand out um, until we get the other work, you know, jump works stuff in. So that's going to be quite exciting when it all starts coming together. You board from the un underside, there's a elevator that takes you up. And then if you've got the exploration module, you've also got the, um, the garage door, the, the big cargo lift that takes up the rover. So yeah, there'll be rover space, storage space as well. So that's going to be getting in there as well. And then if you come up the elevator when you first enter, to the left will be the captain's quarters with his own private bathroom as well. And then to the right will take you into the module section. So if you've got the touring, that'll be the touring module. If it's the exploration module, it'll be the garage. You can also take the elevator further up and then up there, dead ahead of you, you'll have the uh, escape pods. And then to the left, you'll have the bridge. Uh, and then to the right there, you'll have the upper deck of the touring module or the exploration module. For the exploration module, you've got there the consoles and the scanning stations for two people, uh, as well as hol hollow projectors for things like planets and you know objects and so on. So moving on from there, staying on the top deck, uh, you'll have an elevator again on your right-hand side that'll take you down to the crew quarters. That's also accessible from the lower deck of the module section. Um, and then on the upstairs, you've got a, an armory at the top of the stairs now. That's, that's a new addition. That used to be at the back, but due to size constraints, we've had to move that around a bit, but that's all part of the learning process. And then for the hub uh, is at the back. Everyone gets this. It's this big open space for like, hanging out. It's got a kitchen, pool table, um, seating area, uh, bar as well. And then off to the side of these, you've got more engineering areas for storage and then also um, a compartment room, or sorry, a component room for the um, various components on the ship. So these are all kept side by side on each side of the, the ship. So we've been looking a lot, obviously, at um, luxury brands in real life. Uh, so, you know, expensive car manufacturers uh, and just kind of trying to imitate the kind of shape language and um, a lot of the features they put into their cars. I mean, luxury is more than just it looking nice. It has to be functional and convenient. So a lot of the functions in the ship easy to use, easy to get to as well. It's, it's not like you're kind of awkwardly bumping past panels and components, you know, it's all laid out nicely. So you can just walk up to it, use it and not have to worry about running around things and, you know, um, getting in the way and so on. And then also like for the doors, uh, the doors are nice glass doors, so you can get lots of light inside because that's always a problem with spaceships. Uh, typically speaking, uh, you've got the canopy at the front, but that tends to be it. So in this one, we made sure not only we've got plenty of window space in the front and the back, but also the doorways, because they're glass, you know, you can have the light shining through, you get a lot more natural light in there. Then we also have area lights, um, especially in places like the um, exploration module, uh, just to keep it nice and airy and light. Uh, when the ship increased from, I think it was 61 metres to 90 metres, or 91 metres, 
it has, you know, when you do that, there's always going to be knock-ons. And um, for example, the exploration module has become a lot bigger because of that. Um, and there's some scale issues there because um, it's not just a case of scaling everything up. Because when you do that, people it, people look weird in that space compared to the new scale. For example, if you took like a typical like kitchen and you decided to scale it up by like 20 percent suddenly the countertops aren't where they should be and you start feeling like a child <laughs> compared to everything. So um, yeah, just kind of increasing the scale while not increasing the sense of scale. It's quite tricky. So we've been doing some clever things there, like um, we've been raising the floors a little bit and um, just giving more space. That actually works for us, especially in the exploration module, uh, because we have more space then for the rovers and the, the cargo down below. And it just lets us focus more in the top section. But uh, in terms of the style as well, there's just been a lot of experimentation, a lot of testing. A lot of time, you know, we, we can, you know, sketch stuff out, see what it's going to look like. But sometimes you just have to go in there and actually model it, see how it looks, see how it feels as well. And like how you walk around it, how the light reacts to it and so on. You just have to get it done. And um, yeah, it's a time consuming process. And, you know, it, it helps, obviously, if you have a, a general idea of what you're trying to do. But there has been a lot of changes, iterations and so on. For example, the captain's quarters, uh, we've actually redone that uh, once and um, it's just purely because the first pass wasn't quite where we wanted it to be. There's a few conflicts with the style compared to the other areas. So it's better to just get that done now, figure that out now. So when we're doing, say, the jump or future ships, we don't fall into the same pitfalls and make the same mistakes. In the cockpit, we've got this nice open canopy with a lot of visibility. It's probably the most visibility we've put in any ship so far. Um, and that's also mirrored downstairs in the captain's cores, but more on that later. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's a fantastic view. You can see quite a lot. The key was to keep it as unobstructed as possible. Obviously, there's been a lot of development there and there's been a lot of community feedback with um, things like struts and so on. We did decide to get rid of them in the end, so um, I think, to be honest, everyone's a bit pleased with that because it is just nice to have this nice open space. Where we're at with the 600i currently is it's basically going for its final art passes at the moment. This is kind of the stage where tech design kind of get pretty hands on with it. So we'll start kind of making plans for what we do with the model, where it divides, where it splits up, setting up the thrusters, the turrets, the seats, everything that's basically a usable item on board. Just had a major review for the 600i art and um, on the whole, it seems to be going good. Uh, but there are a few things we need to look at. Two things are the consistency of the style throughout the ship and the lighting. For the consistency of the style, I mean, we've got four artists working on this. It's the first time we've done this style. So inevitably, there's going to be some misalignment somewhere. So uh, what we've been trying to do is just kind of now massage those areas so they all are consistent. They're roughly the same. Um, it's not like we have to do major reworks. It's just a couple of um, you know, like angles and you know, shapes and so on. The big one is that no lines can terminate. So uh, if you have any sort of key lines running through the environment, we need to kind of keep them flowing. And so they wrap around. Uh, the 600 die is quite good like that, to be honest, because the whole ship is kind of curved and has this nice sort of elegant shape to it. Working with that shape on the inside, we can sort of wrap things around or you know terminate things downwards out of sight, so it looks nice and clean and elegant. And that was the main issue with the captain's quarters. It was um, the older version. There were these terminations which looked quite clunky, and it was because the, we had this 90 degree back wall. But we've sort of worked with that a bit, massaged it, and uh, worked around those issues. And then the other thing was the lighting and. Basically, the idea with the lighting was that the hub areas were a lot warmer, a bit more homely and cosy, whereas the technical areas would be a lot brighter and more clinical. Uh, so lots of blues, uh, whites and so on in the, the technical areas, like the exploration module, like the, uh, the component rooms and so on. And then like the living quarters, the hubs and so on, it would be a lot more uh, a lot warmer um, in feel. Now, we're still trying to balance this correctly. And especially in the bridge and the rear section where you've got these big windows, uh, what's happening is that the sunlight is coming in and actually just overexposing everything because it's right now it's too dark. So we need to make it a lot brighter. I mean, the idea with this ship is it needs to be brighter anyway. We don't want it to be this dank, dark place. It has to be bright and comfortable to you know, play in, not just you know, as a visual style, but if you're a player, you don't want to be spending your time in a, a dark, cramped ship. You, know, you want it to be nice and comfortable and airy. And, uh, that was the idea with the lighting anyway, that's where we want to go forward. Whatever you're seeing now, you probably expect iterations on that, improvements as well, and um, we want to try and hopefully nail that feel. And that contrast as well between light and dark and you know warm and cold and so on, uh, will hopefully make an interesting space to play in. So once we then get it back from the art team as you know we're done and dusted with it, 
that's when we kind of start full development on it. So we'll start using the final assets to do the final setups, get all the animations in there, get all the VFX and audio as well ready to go. So the first one out is the exploration module. And honestly, I think people are going to be using it to beat the competition to where they're going. You know, you've got a, a Connie chugging along, taking a rover somewhere. And you know, Connie's are great. And I think it's Connie's or a Starfare or something. Um, and then, you know, if you've got 600 i you just straight past them, get there first, land there first, start exploring first. I think that's what it's about, really. And then um, when we eventually get the Turing module out as well, and that version, you'll be able to get to places faster. I mean, as we saw with the demo uh, last year, it takes a bit of time to get around, especially if you're in an Aurora. So, um, you know, the 600i hopefully will get you to places that much quicker. And I think that's going to make all the difference in gameplay if you need to make transactions or be somewhere, you know, do things. Uh, I think that's a uh, side of things maybe people haven't considered before. So um, that's going to be quite exciting when we get the expanded universe in and we start having those travel times. It's going to play a, play a role, I think. The 600i is basically kind of designed for a bit of wow factor. So it's one of those things where when you do pull into port, others are people are going to know that you've got the money. Um, they're going to kind of see it as though you're pulling into dock in a luxury yacht. Uh, yeah, the Origin brand is, is obviously very much catered towards slick lines, um, really kind of um, smooth kind of looking styling to it. So it really does fill the void between where the, we've got the 300i and also the 890 jump. And, you'll see a lot more of the, the kind of origin uh, design throughout the ship as well.